In this lesson, we're going to be checking solutions of linear inequalities. We're going to be graphing linear inequalities in two variables and using linear inequalities to solve real life problems. A linear inequality in two variables, x and y, can be written as ax plus by is less than c, ax plus by is less than or equal to c, ax plus by is greater than c, and ax plus by is greater than or equal to c, where a, b, and c are real numbers. A solution of a linear inequality in two variables is an ordered pair x comma y that makes the inequality true. For this example, we're going to tell whether the ordered pair is a solution of the inequality. Well, we have an ordered pair with our x and y coordinates, and we have an x and y in our inequalities. So what do we do with our Chromebooks at night? We're going to plug them in. So I'm going to plug in negative 1 for x and then 9 for y. So I get 2 times negative 1 plus 9 is less than negative 3. And then I just want to figure out if this inequality is true. Okay. Well, I'm going to just simplify. I get negative 2 plus 9 is less than negative 3, and that becomes 7 is less than negative 3. This is not true, so I'm going to reject this. So this point is not a solution. For part B, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to plug my ordered pair in. So I'm going to get 2 minus 3 times quantity negative 2 is greater than or equal to 8. Okay. Well, negative 3 times negative 2 right here, this is going to be positive 6. So 2 plus 6 is greater than or equal to 8. 8 is greater than or equal to 8. This is a true statement. Remember, an or statement, only one of them needs to be true. So greater than or equal to. Well, 8 is equal to 8. So this ordered pair is a solution. And now we're done with this one. So I'm going to explain uh, one way to graph inequalities in two variables. Uh, and then I'm actually going to show you another way that I think is a little bit easier while we're doing our examples. But anyway, step one, we're going to graph the boundary line for the inequality, use a dashed line for less than or greater than, and then use a solid line for less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. Step two, test a point that is not on the boundary line to determine whether it is a solution of the inequality. Step three, when the test point is a solution, shade the half plane that contains the point. When the test point is not a solution, shade the half plane that does not contain the point. Like I said earlier, my alternate uh, method here is going to determine whether or not we're going to shade above our line or below our line. And that's going to be using either the greater than or greater than or equal to or the less than or less than or equal to sign. And that will make more sense once we do the next example. So for this example, we want to graph y is less than or equal to 2 in a coordinate plane. Okay. Well, if you remember, the line y equals 2 is just a horizontal line, because the slope is 0. There's no x term, so the slope is 0. And my y-intercept is 2, so it's a horizontal line at 2. Okay. And we see that we have an equals here. This equals means that I have a solid line. If it was just y is less than 2, I'd have a dotted line or a dashed line. Um, here. So anyway, I'm going to first start by just graphing my line that goes along with this inequality. So I've graphed my line, and now I need to figure out where I want to shade. Okay. So the clipping from the textbook says to just test a point, but there's actually an easier way in my opinion. All you need to do is look at what this inequality symbol is. Y is less than or equal to 2. Okay, We already have the equal to 2. Now I need the less than. Well, remember, the y dimension is the vertical dimension. So I need all the values that are less than this line y. So that's going to be all the values below this line. So since it's less than, I'm going to shade in below this line right now. So on a piece of paper, it's easier to shade the entire thing, but digitally or maybe on a whiteboard, you might see the shading done like this. Either way, it means the same, same thing. Every single point that's on this line or below this line is a solution to this inequality. And now we're done with this one. In this example, we're going to be graphing the equation negative x plus 2y is greater than 2 in a coordinate plane. Well, my first recommendation would be to solve this inequality into slope-intercept form, into y equals mx plus b form, okay? And then instead of an equals, we'll just have our inequality symbol. So I'm going to rewrite my initial inequality, which is negative x plus 2y is greater than 2. Now I'm going to add x on both sides. 
and I get 2y is greater than x plus 2. Now I'm going to divide every single term by 2 and rewrite this. I get y is greater than 1 half x plus 1. Okay, So my slope of the corresponding line here is going to be 1 half. My y-intercept is going to be 1, so I'm going to plot that. That's going to be right here, 1. And then my rise over run is going to be up 1, right 2. And also down 1, left 2. All right, so now because I have just a greater than and not a greater than or equal to, I'm going to draw a dashed line here. This is much easier to do on a pencil and paper with a ruler, but I'm going to be drawing a line and then erasing parts of it to have a dash. Anyway, now I have a dashed line. So now I need to figure out whether or not I'm going to shade above this line or below this line. And remember, when I say above, I mean pick a point and, and go straight vertical. Okay, So that's just thinking about the y value here. Okay, So above would be pick a point and go directly up, or below would be pick a point and go directly down. Okay, Well, I have greater than, so I want all the y values to be larger than this line. So that's going to be above this line. So take any point on this line and then go above from it. So it's going to be this section here that we're going to shade in. If you wanted to pick a test point, you could, but I think this way is a little bit easier to understand. So I'm going to shade in the region above the line. So now we've successfully graphed this linear inequality, and now we're done. For this example, you can spend at most $10 on grapes and apples for a fruit salad. Grapes cost $2.50 per pound, and apples cost $1 per pound. Write and graph an inequality that represents the amounts of grapes and apples you can buy. Identify and interpret two solutions of the inequality. So first we need to write our inequality. Okay. Well, I know the maximum amount of money I can spend is $10. So at most 10 means I'm going to have something that is less than or equal to 10. Okay. So that's going to be less than or equal to 10. And that's $10. So I just need to figure out the total cost of how much money I'm spending on apples and grapes. Okay. Well, I have the prices per pound, okay? so I just need to assign my variables. I'm going to call pounds of grapes x, so x equals pounds of grapes, and then y will equal pounds of apples. Well, I know that it costs $2.50 per pound of grapes, okay? so if I multiply $2.50 per pound of grapes times the amount of pounds of grapes, that's going to give me the total cost for buying grapes. So it's going to be 2.5x. And then to figure out the total cost of apples, that's going to be plus $1 per pound times the amount of pounds y of apples. Well, 1 times y is just y. So this is just going to be plus y. So now I've successfully set up my linear inequality. The next thing I need to do is graph this inequality. Okay, I've written this, so now I have to graph this. So I'm going to zoom out here. I have a graph over here. Okay, so And I'm going to rewrite this inequality. 2.5x plus y is less than or equal to 10. Okay, So I'm actually going to solve this for y to get myself into slope-intercept form. Okay, so all I have to do is subtract 2.5x on both sides. And this is the same thing as y is less than or equal to negative 2.5x plus 10. Now, negative 2.5 is my slope because it's the number that's being multiplied by x. But it's more useful to write this as an improper fraction, so I'm going to rewrite negative 2.5x as negative 5 over 2x. So it's going to be y is less than or equal to negative 5 over 2x plus 10. Okay. Now, I want to graph this inequality. Okay. And I can see that since it's equal, I'm going to have a solid line, not a dashed line. Okay. I see my slope is negative 5 over 2. I see my y-intercept is 10. So I'm going to go back over here. My y-intercept is 10, so I'm going to plot that right here on the graph. 
okay? And I know my slope is negative five over two, so I'm gonna go down five and right two. So down five, right two. And I can do that again, and that's useful because that will find my um, x-intercept, down five, right two. My x-intercept's gonna be four, if you can tell. Now I'm gonna draw a line segment through this because it doesn't really make sense to buy negative pounds of grapes and negative pounds of apples, so that's why we only have one quadrant here. So now I've, I've successfully graphed the line portion of this, but if we remember, we wanna graph the inequality. And if I go down here to my inequality, here we are, okay? So this is y is less than or equal to. Okay, well, we've already dealt with the equal to, now we need to deal with the less than. We need y to be less than, all the values below our line. Remember, below means vertical, okay, vertically below. So pick any point in the line and either go straight up or straight down. And since it's less than, we're gonna go straight down. So I'm gonna shade in this region, okay? So now I've shaded in this region, okay? So we've, we're done graphing our inequality. But the last step, you can see over here, says that we need to identify and interpret two solutions of the inequality. Well, there's an infinite amount of solutions. Any ordered pair in this region right here would count as a solution. But all we gotta do is interpret two of those, okay? So I'm just gonna pick, let's see, I'm gonna pick the point uh, 2 comma 5 because that's on the line right here and that's okay so I'm gonna write that over here 2 comma 5 and then I'm also gonna pick the ordered pair let's see maybe I'll do something that's inside the shaded region I'll do 1 comma 3 so 2 comma 5 X is pounds of grapes Y is pounds of apples so I can buy and then for the first one, I can buy two pounds of grapes and five pounds of apples. So that's my first ordered pair. And then my second one is I can buy one pound of grapes and three pounds of apples. Both of these are under our $10 limit. So we've successfully interpreted two ordered pairs uh, that are solutions to this uh, inequality, and now we're done.